Hello everybody, it's been a long time since I've done a video, I'm well aware of that. Today we're going to be tackling this Nintendo Switch that a customer brought in. As you can see, there's some corrosion on the board. The issue with this Switch is the customer says uh, it works on the dock but it does not work when it's off the dock, so it only works on the dock. I opened the device and I noticed there was liquid damage. I'll show you. Try and show you up here. You can see there's liquid damage on the uh, metal frame here. And then of course there's liquid damage on the board. The LCD connector appears to be fine. So it leads me to believe that the issue is probably to do with this liquid damage. So as we can see here, there's corrosion on the board. It's taken out, looks to be this resistor here. I'm not sure if this capacitor is actually good. Problem is, I cannot find that capacitor on any of my donor boards so that's going to be a problem if that one needs replacing but it's not shorting so I'm hoping it doesn't need replacing and it looks like whatever damage is on there is more of a cosmetic thing than an actual issue with the thing. This one here does look to be burnt so maybe we'll replace that as well and if we move across you can see this area here is completely stuffed there's not even a pad there anymore if there is it's gone and this uh, resistor or filter, whatever it is here, is also pretty charcoal. I'm going to do a continuity test to see if that pad is completely um, stopping the circuit flow. So I've put my multimeter in continuity mode and let's give it a look. Let's go see here. If I follow this trace here, okay. So I'm going to go off this point here on one probe. I'm going to come back up and just do it here. So that is flowing through that um, resistor or whatever this is here. Isn't even going through um, the circuit on this line here. So that's fine, but I'm still going to replace it because that whole area around there, as you can see, is pretty damaged. Um, so I think it would be best just to replace that. So if I just come back to this area here and I pull out a donor board, so it's that one there um, and this isn't on either donor board I have. This is a HAC CPU 20 and a HAC CPU 1. So they are different revisions. So that's probably our issue. Um, but anyway, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to grab the component here from a donor board and we're just going to replace it. So I'm just going to remove this one first. I'm just going to put some flux on here um, in the hope that it might help to remove that thing. Fire up the soldering iron. We may be able to remove this without using hot air, which would be good just so we don't put excess heat on stuff that doesn't need it. Let's just see if we can just remove that thing entirely. Now I do want to clean up this area because it's pretty disgusting. It's a pretty fair effort, I'd say. Gonna put some more flux. I'm actually gonna take to that with some solder wick and just completely clean it off. There we go, nice and clean. And I'll pop some solder back on there. That'll be enough for now. Alright, so that's that prep done. Grab out our donor board. We'll try and remove this as best we can. I'm going to use hot air for this. Uh, let's see if we can just do this with soldering iron just to sort of grab it on there. So uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm just getting it to grab on the solder. Um, and then I'm just going to use the hot air again just to position it in there. Just rather than trying to do it with the soldering iron. Notice there it's pretty much just sort of fallen into place um, and then I'm literally gonna dab it with a soldering iron and it should work out okay. There we go. Alright so that's that section done. You'll notice up here too um, the pads for this part are gone. However I've checked on the other boards and uh, there is actually nothing there on them. It's literally just like a, the whole thing is just one pad. So it's not like there was a capacitor or resistor or anything there. 
So that one is fine. This one as well. You can see because it's completely gold that there was never any component there. So that's fine to leave. Now, if we come back over here, I think I do want to replace this one. This capacitor, I think should be okay enough to leave there. Um, but I'm just going to clean the board first. Ooh. Oh, oh dear. That's a slight issue. Let's grab that dead boy over there. So that pad uh, is it completely gone. Looks like it. Yeah, it's eaten away there. All right. So in that case, I'm going to scratch this back here. Okay, that's good. The pad was still there. It's better than I was expecting. I'm going to put some solder on there. Okay, that'll do the job for now. Probably pretty hard to see on the camera there. Again, I'm going to switch to the donor board. And there's the component we want. Let's take it off. Okay, so again, now that that's in place, heat it up and it'll just fall into place. Okay, so I'm just going to just go through and show you the board. Um, just so you can see there was nothing else. Okay, so that's one component we've replaced. And if we move along, you can see the other one there. And you can definitely see the burn mark on that pad that's been removed. Um, but if we go across the rest of the board, let's find the CPU here. See, there's not really any liquid damage anywhere. There is obviously some flux from when I um, was replacing that part there. So even if we look at the USB-C port, it's all pretty, pretty clean. That does look a bit questionable. I'm not sure if there's just gunk on there, if that chip's actually burnt. Um, and if that chip's burned, that's going to be a big pain in the ass. Because there is solder balls under that. Oh no, it looks okay, it looks okay. We might be out of the woods on that one. There are some scratches on the top. Uh, so that might have just been some residual crap on my fingertips. Oh, yeah, we can see there's... Oh, that's thermal paste. It's because I didn't clean it. If we look over near M92, it all looks okay. And we'll check out the BQ tip. That's all okay. Yeah, I already know this switch does charge because it powers on. So, the only thing left to do now is to reassemble it and see if it works. Alright, so I've just connected enough that I hopefully need to turn it on and let's see what happens, shall we? Let's try and get the glare out. Still get nothing at all. Try and plug it in. It would appear we have nothing still. So let's have another look. Okay, so nothing will replace blue. There's no corrosion in the LCD connector. Pins all look okay. This guy here does look a little bit funky. Uh, check on a data board. Even this one's a little bit discolored. Alright, so it's normal. I think the discoloration, because it looked brown, I thought it was a capacitor, but it is not. 
I mean, the issue is like we could go around and place M92 um, and spend all this time on it and just end up with the same result. And then we've just spent also money on replacing chips that may not have needed to be replaced. So again, I'm just going around and, and checking the board. I think that is thermal paste. Yeah, it was just thermal paste because I spilled some. That all looks okay. So I really don't know what the issue could be. I just don't really want to go down a rabbit hole of replacing chips um, because they're all in working order and like the voltages um, coming out of pin five and pin six are correct. So it's not like there's an issue with those. Um, P13 USB seems to be all okay. Doesn't seem to be an issue there. I've actually seen where uh, the P13 will go and it'll literally just have like a hole in it because it got so hot. But I mean, there's like small amounts of um, like corrosion or liquid as you can see, but it's not going to be enough to actually really cause an issue. And I've just covered this board in thermal paste now, which is awesome. See, I'm not quite sure on this one. I may have to bench it, uh, do a little bit of research and come back to it to see if there's something I've maybe missed. If you have any idea of what the issue could be, leave it down in the comments below. I'm going to hit up the Tronix Fix Forum. I'm there quite a lot and there's some very useful information there. So I'm hoping I might find a, a thread somewhere along the same lines that will point me in the right direction. But for now, I'm going to have to put this one aside and move on to other jobs uh, because we can't just waste all day chasing down a problem. So. Thanks for tuning in and watching. Please hit that subscribe button. Like it if you liked it. Dislike it if you hated it. And I'll see you in the next one. And maybe we'll revisit this one. We'll find out.